My mom told me that I started uttering sentences when I was about seven months old. Not just blah, 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 or da, da. It was full sentences. She said she recognized a full sentence from me really early on. And she said I did a lot of things early. Like I walked early, I talked early. And it was very clear from an early age that I was a communicator of sorts. Now, when you have this gift, sometimes what happens in life is that there's something that gets in the way of that gift. I was about two years old, and I remember in my house, we had these other people. We called them helpers. In Jamaica, where I grew up, there are these people. They're kind of nannies, if you will, but they were called helpers. And I remember all the time hearing, Bobby, this is what they called me at the time, Bobby, you talk too much. Bobby, you talk too much. Bobby, you talk so much. Bobby, you ask so many questions. Bobby, you talk all the time. Bobby, you should be a lawyer. Bobby, you talk too much. I heard that. And as a little kid, that stuff soaks inside. And so as a little kid, hearing, Bobby, you talk too much, I stopped talking. And throughout all of my childhood, I became known as a quiet kid. And I was very silent and people thought I was shy. And I was that way all the way through high school and even early into college. But you know how when you have this gift, when you have something in your space, things that you're supposed to do always seem to find you. So even though I was seen as quiet, I was asked to have these speaking roles. I was asked to speak on stage. I was asked to preach <laughs> as a little kid. Um, I'm a PK, by the way. So my dad, I had the opportunity to preach in front of a church of about 1,000 or 1,200 members at the age of eight years old. And it was a nerve wracking experience for me, but that was a part of the journey that I was on. That was a part of the gift that I was given and that I had, no matter how much I tried to escape it or shy away from it or run away from it, it always seemed to find me. And so when I was a freshman in college, I got a, I was in a conversation with a chaplain at the college and he said to me, I've been looking at you and you're playing, I was a musician also at the time, he said, you're playing for these groups and you're, you're hiding behind this keyboard, but I just sense that you should be the one out in front of the mic. You should be the one leading other people. And at that moment, it didn't really resonate with me or it didn't really make a difference. But years later, I kept replaying that conversation. And it was one of the things that really led me to start getting into the space of speaking and really begin embracing my leadership power, really begin to start moving into the space that I, that I know that God gifted me to be in. And so now, ultimately, what I do is I, I'm able to recognize some of that same stuff in other people, some of that same shyness, some of that same uh, desire to stay in the background. And I encourage them and I enable them and I equip them to share their stories in a way that influences other people so that they can ultimately bring transformation into their lives. <laughs>